Dave Rubin had one of his another uh, another one of his high level discussions on Fox and Friends uh, about the Democratic Party and their embrace of well defund the police. Let's take a look. All you had to do was stand up to Kamala Harris, who was for defunding the police out in Los Angeles. They took millions out, as well as a billion dollars out of the police budget in the NYPD and millions out of Minneapolis. Now he speaks up. Yeah, this is so typical of what has happened with the left and the sort of internal war between the progressives and whatever is left of a moderate Democrat. And I'm not really sure how much is left, although Clyburn's sort of taking the mantle right there. I mean, look, in effect, nobody, nobody except the radicals that want violence on the streets and that want mayhem, nobody besides that wants the police to be defunded. Even in places, in black communities where crime is high, they want more policing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of evidence of this. You only want less policing if you want chaos. And I think the, the progressives in many cases, they do want that chaos because they then think that that proves that somehow the state is racist and that then <sighs> that, that, that in essence is what allows them to, to run around and say, America is so terrible, look at all of this. But the average person wants law and order. That's, that's just very simple. And <laughs> All right. Uh, ben, I, I want your take on this. Uh, does your brain need to go into recovery mode after hearing it, all those high-level ideas? It, um, man, look, um, the logical inconsistencies in his argument, because he started off by saying there's nothing left of a, of, of a moderate Democrat yet. Moderate Democrats don't want to defund the police. Which one is it? Now, I don't, I'm not going to rest there too long because the hypocrisy is the point. The point is to both label us as radicals who cannot be redeemed, as well as people who are feckless and incompetent and all those sorts of things. It's the number one tool of fascism to label us as vicious and incompetent. That's what Dave Rubin is doing here. Uh, but but number two, I don't know if there's a person in out here that I would rather like, I, I'm not going to say this on your show because I'm not going to get you in trouble, but I would love to meet Dave Rubin in person because he's really like he's really pushing. He's really grifting in the highest order. D Dave Rubin doesn't believe anything he says. He knows that in that house that he purchased, that he left the Young Turks for so that he can make an income big enough to afford that million dollar house that he bought. He knows that that community is not inundated with police officers. His community is not safe because they have an abundance of police. In fact, they have an, a, 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 a shortage of police officers. They have a dearth of police officers. They don't have police officers patrolling his million dollar neighborhood. What they have are resources. So he wants policing for black communities and impoverished communities when he knows he doesn't have it for his own community that's a uh, that's an excellent point that's a lot of great points uh so dave rubin you can go ahead and, and, and get me in trouble i tried to get uh dave rubin way way back when he was you know pretending to be a, a progressive uh and i don't even know what he is anymore but i tried to get him on the show obviously because i wanted to talk to different people right uh and so this is somebody who wouldn't go on somebody's show if you don't have a big enough audience you right. know what i'm saying right and that kind of tells you who they are when when they say, oh no, uh, not big enough. Sorry, not a big enough reach. Uh, you're too small. Well, it kind of shows you the direction that they want to go. That they're all they're interested in is, you know, views, revenue, clout, all that stuff, and not actually interested on ideas. And it's like, it's it's the opposite of what Michael Brooks was, right? Michael Brooks did not give a shit how big you were. If you had right, ideas man. and you wanted to have an earnest conversation about the left and about the future of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a workers movement, he will yeah. talk to you. And that's yeah. what I love about Michael Brooks. That's how you know that they're a real one, you know, yeah. Yeah. when you have these conversations. And so yeah. we know we we know what Dave Rubin's about. We know He's that he gets paid. man. Yeah, absolutely. He gets paid to go on these TV shows and. And, and talk about things that he has absolutely no idea of, do, uh, of you know, he doesn't know anything and about listen, anything. Jeff, he's not smart. Dave Rubin. That's what I'm saying. You're dumb. You're, 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 you're dumb as shit. Like, you wouldn't last five seconds in a debate with a first-year freshman.
Okay, let's just be real. You are not bright. All you are is a grifter who has a decent enough team that knows how to capitalize on your willingness to grift of the highest order. Basically. And so getting to the actual uh, policy positions, right? So let's talk about defund the police, because a lot of this conversation is based on what uh, a lot of Democrats have been saying, yes. uh, how they're how they're getting mad at the left for backing to fund the police and right. quote unquote scary socialism right mm -hmm. uh and so you know clyburn goes in and says oh you know that's defund the police we never don't right. never talk about that never talk about that no we can't do that we can't do that at all you know it's weird isn't it weird how conservatives they understand what defunding something means when it comes to like education for example when it yes. comes to health care when yes. it comes to anything that helps regular people uh yeah. and yet they miss the point when it when we talk about defunding police, I mean, for example, he talked that Dave Rubin talked about NYPD losing a billion dollars, right? Right. They have a six billion dollar budget. Now they have five billion dollars. Ooh, oh, my God. <laughs> That's New York is going to fall into absolute anarchy absolute with only five anarchy. billion dollars for the police. What can what can you even do? Can you even have a police officer with five billion dollars? <laughs> Not what? No, no. Uh, he's going to be under. I mean, he's not going to have any sort of body armor or or anything like that. They're going to have no cameras, obviously, because they have, can't have cameras. Uh, no. He, instead of a gun, uh, they're going to have you know they're going to have a pointy stick. stick with a rock on it. I mean, that's that's all they get. That's all. Defund the police. Defund the police. Yeah. I mean, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the worst off those is the the allegation that progressives want to defund the police because we want violence. Right. We, oh no, right. you, you you guys want the violence. You want it to be chaos. Why? We don't want chaos. No, we're the ones that are saying that we don't want chaos. You, you know what? You know what chaos is. You know what starts chaos? Shooting unarmed black men. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and to be sure to, to like double down on what you're saying, man, because what you're saying is absolutely accurate to the T. Here's the here's the thing. These five and six billion dollar budgets come at the expense of other resources being provided to the community right. that would help prevent the need for police in the first place. Now, you and I are having a good faith conversation about the nature of crime, the economic uh, uh, factors that play into crime. crime. There's so many studies that show that, that crime is an economic phenomenon where you have uh, poverty, you have crime. The less mm -hmm. poverty you have, the less amount of crime that you have, right? But Which is a good they example. Know this. They, go ahead. I was just going to say that example you put of, of uh, you know, when you talked about earlier about Dave Rubin's neighborhood of how they don't have a lot of police because they don't need them because there's not a lot of that. Now, you could argue that there's maybe other, other types of crime, like, you know, drugs, for example. Uh, I mean, you just go to Don Jr.'s house, allegedly, you know, you might find you might find some uh, man, some uh, that drugs. Snorts, that man snorts more lines of cocaine than I smoke blunts. So, so he's, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of crime going on in, in his neighborhood. And I guess when you consider where I am, there might be some crime going on in my neighborhood. But I digress. The point is, the point is, is they know this. They know, mm -hmm. they know that if they poured resources into the community to address the underlying economic conditions, there would be no crime in those communities any more than there's crime in their own community. But that takes away from the narrative that there's some type of inherent moral failing in minority communities, particularly black communities, for which we need an abundance of police officers because police, the policing agencies have become an entity unto themselves that have their own identity, their own, um, their own power, their own budgets, and they have the ability to execute judgment and, and justice as they see it over and above the will of the people and over above the will of the mayor. So it's not just Republicans that are pushing this, but it's also the Republican police departments that are never going to let go of a dime because that means that's one less toy that they can get that semester. Right. I mean, you know, not having their weapons, their, their you know, bear cats. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. you know, surplus military vehicles, which, again, we did actually have under the Obama administration, right. which is a great example of what you're pointing out how, I mean, what, what we're doing right now 
is we're, we're policing like it was in the 80s. In the 80s, there was a crime epidemic. In the 80s, there was, uh, you know, a, a, a need for policing, okay? Uh, to an extent, that's a little bit more than we need it today. Right now, instead of over-policing, what we need is reinvestment in those communities. What we right. need is, is more rehabilitation. We need investment in small businesses and in these poor areas. Why? That'll bring jobs. That'll start to revitalize those areas. Community centers, after-school programs, things like that that steer people away from criminal activity. Let me give you an example, um, um, Jeff. I, I live in Atlanta. Um, at times, sometimes I live in Boston. Sometimes I live in Uzbekistan, right? I, I, I move around Becky, a lot. Becky, Stan, Stan. <laughs> exactly. So you never really know where you're going to find me. Right now, you can find me in the A. Um, but anyway, the point is, is that in the neighborhood that I live in, in, um, in Georgia, it's a predominantly black neighborhood. It's so black, in fact, that I looked twice when I saw white people running. I'm like, where the hell they think they're going? No, joking. I was like, <laughs> wow, look, we have some white neighbors. We don't have any cops. We don't have any crime. It is a freaking utopia. Why? Because it's pretty middle class. Yep. It is pretty. Everybody has basically what they need. What they need. Everybody has jobs. It is overwhelming. We might have one white person in the whole neighborhood. And the thing is, is that if people are given of any race, any color, any creed, any nationality, any any religion, if they are giving a given a baseline of subsistence, they have what they need, then you won't have crimes of desperation and right. crimes of opportunity. Exactly. Exactly. And, and 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 see, understand that this is where you know conservatives come in and they try to push this narrative of no crime. And poverty, poverty means you have bad character, right? Mm, uh, and, exactly. you know, if, you, if you're poor, it's because you're a bad person. And so if you're a criminal, that means you're a bad person. Exactly. And so when they look at who is, you know, poor in this country uh, as an average, right, you've got, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, communities of color that tend to be Black on the more folks. poor spectrum. Yes, absolutely. And they look at them as their well there must be something inherently wrong with them. They are inherently criminal. And you could either look at it two different ways, right? Uh, and, and this is, you know, this is what conservatives are trying to set up. Either they do not have, uh, you know, they have a lack of uh, being able to get ahead because of opportunity, right? They don't have a lack, right. they have a lack of opportunity. Or, and this is how racists look at it, it's they, they, they don't do well because of genetics. <laughs> There's something genetically wrong with them. Right. And so, therefore, they justify not helping those communities um, and because it, it's not, well, it's just not worth it because they're they're broken. There's a little bit more insidiousness to a third argument. Those first two arguments are actually spot on. The third one is it's not that they will ever admit that they think it's genetic. It's that that they will always argue that the only thing wrong in this country is you. That there's mm -hmm. no systemic problems in this country. Therefore, any problems that you're facing must be a product of your rate, your your training, your upraising, your upbringing, your parents, or culture. some inherent culture. Culture. They love that shit, and some inherent moral failing. So there are some outright racists who are loud and proud Absolutely. saying it's genetic, but then there's those dog whistle racists who will say, no, 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 no. It's your culture. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.